Okay, so let's go over this first assignment, researching primary and secondary sources. It comes due pretty quick, and uh, so you want to make sure you know exactly what you're doing going into this, okay? Um, first of all, the purpose of this assignment is multi-tiered, right? First of all, it's designed to help you recognize the difference between a primary and a secondary source. And for that reason, it is very structured on where I allow you to get a primary and where I allow you to get your secondary sources. Okay, uh, primary source is any first-hand information, right? That could be anything from uh, interviews, testimonials, primary documentation, right? You know, things like, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation would be a primary source, for example. Uh, secondary source is any source that uses other sources in order to do analysis, right? Journal articles, right? Books, things like that. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to make you specifically find a journal article. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, this is the que the uh, the uh, assignment has three questions that you have to answer. Basically, three boxes when you open the assignment where you'll type in your answers. Part one of the assignment, you go to the Avalon Project website. The Avalon Project is run by Yale Law School. Okay, it's at avalonlaw.yale.edu. This place has a ton of primary sources in it, right? You need to go through these and you need to find a primary source that is a U.S. history based primary source dated anywhere from 1865 to the present day. All right. So pay close attention to that because there's a lot of sources on there. And so it's very easy for you to pick a bad one. For example, the Magna Carta. It's a primary source, but it's not U.S. history. And it's not after 1865, 1865 or later, right? It's 1215, and that's English history, okay? Uh, the Emancipation Proclamation. Is it U.S. history? Yes. Is it um, after 1865? No, it's not. It's 1860, well, technically 1862, but it went into effect January 1st of 1863. It doesn't qualify. You can't use it, right? You need to find something that fits those two criteria, you know, U.S. history and after 1865. Once you've found that, then you need to create, this is the answer to part one or question one, if you will, you need to create a Chicago-style footnote citation of that uh, particular source. And you see I've provided in the instructions a link to Northwest Missouri's uh, guide on doing um, citation. Now, when you go to that link, and since this is a source that you're going to be looking at online on the web, it's an online source. So you click the tab on that one for online sources and you use that citation format, right? Which is going to have author if there is one, like, you know, who do you put for an author for uh, some of these documents? Sometimes you don't know. Author and then the document and then uh, the, um, trying to do this from memory, uh, the, uh, the website, the date accessed, uh, the URL. I think that's all the components yeah you know anyways if you go to online source that will uh, uh lay that out for you okay now it's a footnote style, style citation that i want you to create here so the important thing to remember is that though when you go to that site and it shows you how to do the cita citation the citation the color code nice color coded one will have periods separate in each segment that's because it's a bibliographical footnote style you need to convert that to uh or excuse me, a bibliographical citation style. You need to convert that to a footnote style. How do you do that? Turn those periods to commas, except for the period at the end. Treat every citation like a sentence. It ends with a period, okay? So you do that and you've got your first part done, right? Primary sources. And make sure you're actually looking at a source. Don't open up like there's a thing on Andrew uh, Johnson's impeachment. Don't pull that up and, and use for your primary source the, gr the group of links, right? That's not, I mean, how are you going to find that in a secondary source, a group of links, right? Make sure you're actually looking at a primary document, okay? Part two of this, you need to go to JSTOR. You can access that through your My NCT, NCTC account. You log into that. You go to the library services. Uh, you'll see there's a button there. You click for JSTOR. It's probably going to pop up with a thing saying OCLC login, and then it'll have a spot for username and password, and you'll probably miss the little tiny words where it tells you what those are. 
the username's NCTC, the password's testing. You click on that, now you're into JSTOR, and what you need to do in JSTOR is you need to find a scholarly journal article that uses the primary source you used. So I'll use Magna Carta as an example, even though I know it's not a valid one, right? So I open up JSTOR in the search field, I type in Magna Carta, and it starts pulling up articles, all right? Now, here's where you gotta be careful on JSTOR. First of all, if it says review, no author and just black letters review, that's a book review. That's not a journal article. You can't use it. If you use that, you're gonna get a zero on that part. If it says book chapter, that's part of a book. That's not a journal article. You can't use it. You'll get a zero. Don't do that. If it says back matter, that's the back of a journal. Uh, ag that's where the ads are. Don't use that, right? Uh, I've had students try and use picture captions. No, don't do, don't do that. Find a scholarly journal article that actually does some kind of analysis, right? And it'll say journal article. It'll have an author. It'll have a title. And then you create a Chicago-style footnote citation for that. Now, here's the thing. JSTOR allows you to cheat. If you take a look at when you have your article picked, you'll see off to the right, you'll see a button that says, cite this. Click that button, it pulls up a thing. It shows APA, MLA, and there at the bottom, Chicago. Take that, change the periods to commas, except for the period at the end, and there you go. You have a Chicago footnote of your journal article. You've just got a perfect score on part two of this assignment, and you did zero work. Isn't that great? Okay. The last part, question three, is where you just type out in one paragraph, don't write a book, don't make it longer than the journal article, write out in one paragraph how the author of the secondary source used your primary source. What does that mean? Well, it means you are going to need to read your primary source so you know what it says, and you're going to need to read the journal article so you know how it uses that source, right? So in other words, that one paragraph should just say a generality, like, well, secondary sources use primary sources for blah, 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 blah. No, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for, here I am, Magna Carta, right? I found this article on it, and I'm going to say the author refers to the Magna Carta when he talks about the rights of Englishmen in reference to the rights of, uh, in reference to its connection to the civil rights movement and, you know, whatever. I'm making stuff up, right? But you get what I mean. You describe how the author uses the source to help prove his argument and do it in about one paragraph. Do that, that's easy 34 points out of the out of the 100 there. And again, very simple assignment, but it's due, like I said, it comes due here really quick. So make sure that you get right on top of it, get that turned in on time, and get yourself started off uh, on the right foot. So good luck.